It's now time for Mark Hankins. Mark and Trina train and equip leaders in every nation through church services, leadership conferences, mission trips, and media. Get ready for a direct and joyful message about how to grow in your faith and learn more about who you are in Christ. Now, let's join Mark and Trina. We're going to talk about identification with Christ, identification with Christ, who you are in Christ. And uh, the word identification, let me give you a quick definition. Identification means to consider or treat as one and the same. To consider or treat as one and the same. In other words, when you carry some identification, maybe like a passport or driver's license, what you're saying is this, this passport and myself are one and the same. Or the word for identification would be identical. Identical. To consider a treat as one and the same or to consider as identical. Identical or to identify. So to talk about your identification with Christ, actually, I went to Bible college in Waxahachie four years and uh, Southwestern College there, same as I got to college years ago. And uh, Southwestern University now, it's a great school in Waxahachie, great uh, Assemblies of God, and uh, started by P.C. Nelson. Uh, so P.C. Nelson uh, said that the believer, every believer, sanctification is accomplished in the believer by recognizing his identification with Christ in his death, burial, and resurrection and by daily reckoning upon the fact of union with Christ. Well, that's pretty good, isn't it? Uh, because, you know, if you talk about identification with Christ, then uh, I actually had, a, you know, a couple of professors, you know, kind of challenge me talking about identification with Christ. And they said, well, the word identification is not even in uh, the Bible, not in the New Testament. I said, well, it does happen to be in Bible Doctrines by P.C. Nelson. <laughs> so I, I got by with that one. Anyway, so P.C. Nelson wrote Bible Doctrines for the Assemblies of God. It's a great, great book. P.C. Nelson was a great, great man. Uh, and so he said, sanctification, in other words, your separation from what you used to be, your separation from what you used to do, and then your dedication unto God, which you could call that, you know, uh, holiness or walking with God and that sanctification as an ongoing process in your life that Jesus has made unto us wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption, 1 Corinthians 1.30. And so the sanctification, how is that accomplished? Well, P.C. Nelson says, here's how it's accomplished because people try so many different things to be separate from what they used to be and what they used to do and to uh, uh, be free from that, and then their dedication to God. So how in the world is that going to be produced? He said, well, it's produced by recognizing your identification with Christ in his death, in his burial, and in his resurrection, and by daily reckoning upon the fact of union with Christ. Praise the Lord. That's really good, isn't it? In other words, recognize your identification with Christ or who you are in Christ and uh, the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ and what happened there, your identification with Christ. Well, the best way to, to find that is going to be primarily in uh, Paul's letters or in Paul's revelation. Right there, Paul's letters. So let's look at a couple of scriptures where Paul talks about what you and I call identification with Christ and uh, your identity and who you are. Because many times the devil, when he brings trials, uh, adversity, pressure, or criticism, many times he's not just after you to have that problem. He's act actually after your identity. Yeah. Because if he can mess you up in your identity, then he can hinder your destiny. Amen. In other words, to know you are who God says you are. You have what God says you have. Amen. Even as a pastor, as a minister, uh, uh, quoting the apostle Paul, he said, uh, I thank the Lord Jesus who has enabled me. He counted me faithful. He put me into the ministry. 
And so even as a minister, if you're challenged, you say, maybe I don't have this ability or I'm not going to be very successful. You just quote the apostle Paul. I thank the Lord Jesus. He has enabled me. He counted me faithful and he put me in the ministry. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So understanding who you are, that you're not what your mama made you or your past made you or circumstances made you or what your somebody called you names and stuff like that. But you are now who God says you are, but God says you, you are this and you are who you are because of what happened on the cross. Yes. Amen. So Galatians 2.20, you found that? Galatians 2.20 says, I am crucified with Christ. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, Galatians 2.20. So if you're looking in the King James Version, uh, Paul's just saying, I am, and I kind of like it. it. Actually, other translations say it should be better translated, I was or I have been crucified with Christ. I like the Message Bible. The Message Bible says, I identified myself completely with Christ. All right, let's try that one more time. In other words, my identity, I identified myself completely with Christ. In other words, my identification with Christ actually supersedes every other kind of label or every other kind of identity that I have. Amen. So that's where Paul, Paul, we call Paul's revelation. He said, I am, and I like the, the King James just because it says, this is who I am. Amen. Paul would say, by the grace of God, I am what I am. In other words, he said, I am. In other words, what happened on the cross, the death and resurrection of Christ has, has uh, determined who I am. Amen. Amen. I like uh, Romans 5, 20, where it says, uh, where sin abounded grace did much more abound. But uh, the um, Laubach translation says, God's work in Christ far exceeds any damage done to us by Adam's fall. Come on. All right, so sometimes you can say, you know, here's how I was damaged and here's what happened to me. But when you see what happened to Jesus on the cross, on. it has the power to change every facet of your identity. Come on, you can get lost there. You know what I mean? You can get lost finding yourself in Christ. Amen. So Paul says, I am. I am. This is who I am. I identified myself completely with Christ. Other translations say Christ took me to the cross. I died there with him. Yes. Yes. I died there with him. One translation says, I consider myself as having died, and now I'm enjoying a second existence, which is simply Jesus using my body. That's it. That's it. So that's a pretty phenomenal revelation. Amen. Because whatever your problems were, <laughs> death will certainly cure it. <laughs> <laughs> and so Paul, Paul would say in agreement with Galatians 2.20, he would go to Romans 6.6 6, and he would say, I know this, knowing this, that my old man, the old person I used to be. One translation says my old sin dominated personality. One translation says my former evil identity. I know this, my old man was crucified with Christ, that the body of sin might be destroyed and henceforth we should not serve sin. So I reckon myself to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God and sin shall not have dominion over me. Satan cannot have dominion over me. Amen. Amen. So in the King James, he says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. So this is not some state of spiritual progression that Paul finally made it to. In other words, Paul's not saying after 30 years, I've decided I can finally say, no, this is what you say the moment you make Jesus the Lord of your life. In other words, it is the ultimate confession of faith is I was there on the cross. Christ took me to the cross with him. He took my condition. He took, listen, the same identical condition that I had and I was identified with him there. He took me to the cross and I died there with him. Praise the Lord. 
Now, I like what T.L. Osborne said years ago. He said, uh, I was crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. Life I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me, gave himself for me. That you actually have substitution and identification. In other words, everything Jesus did, he did it for, in my behalf, for us. Set to the credit of my account like I was there. Now, you know, we don't sing the song anymore, I don't think, but when I was growing up, we used to sing the song, uh, Were You There When They Crucified My Lord? Did you ever heard that song, Were You There? Laid him in the tomb, Were You There? Raised it from the grave. And so when you're, you know, growing up in church, you're like, you just sing the song. You don't have a clue what they're talking about. You're like, I don't really think I was there, but I mean... <laughs> It happened a long time ago and no place local, so I don't think I was there. But So uh, what, what the song is talking about really is your identification with Christ. And the song goes on to say, and sometimes it causes me to tremble. Yes, it does. Yeah. Sometimes. What does that mean? In other words, everything God did in Christ, he did it for us, set to the credit of our account, just like we were there. All right, so you really only have two ordinances in the church. One is what we call water baptism. The other one is communion or the Lord's Supper. Both ordinances in the church that are to be practiced regularly. And, and it brings the believer into the consciousness of their identification with Christ. That water baptism is you were buried together with him and then raised up together with him to new life. Now, a lot of times people don't understand that when it comes to water baptism. I know I didn't. I mean, my, my dad, you know, they, I'm a preacher's kid, middle child, so they had to baptize me several different ways. <laughs> you know, they use Father, Son, Holy Ghost, Jesus only, uh, then throw in Jesus and the Trinity, and they baptized me several different times. And they kind of, I even held me underwater one time, I think, a little bit too long. They're like, I said, too, 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 too. you're going to kill that guy. So, so, <laughs> so I didn't fully grasp what was happening, but I got wet several times. So, <laughs> but to really understand that you're physically acting out your identification with Christ, that you died with him, buried with him, come on then, made alive together with him to walk in newness of life like he was raised by the glory of the Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Amen. Amen. So you're, you're a glory person from the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. All right, so now look at this where he says your identification with Christ. Uh, and T.L. Osborne said, little I moved out, big Christ moved in. Amen. Amen. I kind of laugh because I was raised in church and you have people, uh, especially eschatology people, you know, people who love last day studies and all that stuff, you know. I never liked it that much because it just seemed like they were all wrong. But anyway, so uh, <laughs> after 70 years, I'm like, I don't think they get, had the story just right. But anyway, uh, <laughs> we should have been gone by now. Anyway, uh, <laughs> so uh, people will... Uh, like, let's just say in this church, you know, you, somebody would be sitting here and they'd look at the, all the shadows and they'd go, I don't know how to tell you this, but I think I saw Christ on that wall. <laughs> you see the nose? I, I. Or uh, you'll drive by, you know, and they have a cloud configuration, you know, and they go, look, it's Jesus in the cloud. Look at him. And I'm like, I don't quite see that. Anyway, uh, people tend to see Christ everywhere but where the New Testament tells them to see him. I mean, he's on the walls and stuff like that, you know. But, but he said, you're supposed to actually look in the mirror and say, I was crucified with Christ. It's no longer I live with Christ. Christ lives in me. That's where he lives. In other words, see him living on the inside of you and that's your identification with Christ. The old person you used to be is gone. Gone. Amen. Uh, years ago, my grandpa, Poppy, on my mother's side passed away 
And Poppy was a pretty rough guy, you know. He finally got right with the Lord, my, my mother's dad. But uh, when Poppy, uh, before he passed away, Poppy liked to collect all kinds of stuff. You know, he had junk in a garage. And nobody touched any of Poppy's stuff, you know. You just don't touch it. I mean, he may have had it for 50 years, but it's Poppy's stuff. You leave it alone. But when Poppy died, well, we just had to get rid of his stuff. And he was the only one enforcing it that it had to stay there. But once he's gone, it's easy to get rid of his stuff. But if you think he's still around, Oh, but, if, but if you know, come on, that you've been born again, you're a new creature in Christ, old things have passed away, you don't have to worry about Poppy jumping out and saying, leave my stuff alone. No, you say, he's dead, he's gone, get rid of the stuff, come on. The, the attitudes, you know, and the habits and stuff, stuff that Poppy collected, but Poppy is gone. Ever say, Poppy gone. <laughs> Amen. So there is evidence he was here. Yes. But it's easier to deal with the evidence than the old man. All right, let's try that because most people they think they still got like two men there. Oh the man, the old man, the old man. Now the old man's gone. That's right. I mean, you are a new creature in Christ. Amen. Amen. So to understand your identification with Christ, you have the Lord's Supper, then you have a communion where you take the cup, which is the blood, you take the bread, which is his body, and that literally, I mean, it's just a, a mystery that you're, you're digesting yep. Christ. Yep. His blood, his body, mm -hmm. and that's a demonstration of your union with Christ. Amen. 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 So to look at your identification with Christ, then you have substitution, identification, and union with Christ. Now, go to uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Oh, wow. So we'll, we'll try to present this a little bit uh, more systematically here. Uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. And Paul says it this way, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. He is a new creature. A new creature. Uh, the word new literally means new in kind or new in quality or means unheard of before. Now, if you'll study the four gospels, you'll, you'll see they said that a lot about Jesus. They would say, what kind of man is this? Which is what they should say about us. In other words, they saw Jesus, what kind of man is this? So he's a different kind of man. And when his words are different, <laughs> yeah. he don't complain like everybody else. Come on, he don't whine like everybody else. Come on, he casts out devils with his words, right? He walks on the water, you know. So I had a, I had a preacher uh, well, years ago, I listened to him on the radio, and he said, poor Jesus, he said he was so poor. Poor Jesus, he said he was so poor. He's trying to pour uh, prove that you, you needed to have poverty because Jesus was poor. So he said, poor Jesus, he's so poor. He said, uh, he was so poor, he had to borrow a boat to preach out of. He was so poor. And I said, that don't mean he's poor. A guy that can walk on the water don't need to borrow no boat. <laughs> and the only reason he borrowed the boat is he filled it up for them after he used it. And they say, poor Jesus, he's so poor, they said he got buried in a borrowed tomb. I said, that don't mean he's poor. It's a bad investment to buy a tomb for three days. I mean, if you ain't going to be there but for three days, why would you want to go buy a tomb if you're only going to be there three days? And it's so hard to find rent a tomb nowadays. But anyway, yeah, you just go try to buy a cemetery plot. I said, I'm not going to need it forever, just maybe. Uh, we don't know for sure, maybe a few months. So your, your identification with Christ, what kind, you're a new kind of creature, a new kind of creation, or you're a new kind of human. And so Paul uses the term, put on the new man, a new kind of human, the new man. In other words, it really, 
there's only two, only the whole Bible is really just about two men. You got a bunch of other stuff, but the apostle Paul brings the whole Bible down to two men. First Adam, last Adam. That's it. Amen. In other words, two men affected every person living. First Adam, that means his sin, his failure, you know, his death affected the whole human race. So God just said, well, I'm just going to make another Adam. In other words, I'm going to make a new kind of human. Yes. To make sure it don't fail, I will personally get in a body. Amen. Amen. <laughs> so, so the new creation is like God became a man. Not for one generation, but forever. The God man. Amen. And so the moment you make Jesus your Lord is you're a new creature in Christ. You're not just a forgiven sinner. Amen. 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 Right. As wonderful as forgiveness is, uh, you're, you're a, a totally different than just a forgiven sinner. You're a new kind of human that never existed before, which means you can no longer say I'm only human. Yes, that's right. That's right. You can say I'm also human, but you cannot say I'm only human. We know you're also human, but you're not only human. You're a partaker of the divine nature. Come on, and God said, I'm going to put a new heart, a new spirit in you, and I'm going to make you a new creature or a new kind of human that never existed before. So when he says, if any man be in Christ, now why would he use that terminology, in Christ, which is literally a technical term in Paul's revelation? In other words, most uh, Bible translators will say, when you see the two words in Christ, they're telling translators, don't mess with those two words because those are two words that connect you to Paul's whole system of truth. And so when you see those two words, well, then Arthur S. Way said it this way in his, his uh, uh, translation of Paul's letters. So Arthur S. Way said, the key to the gospel is in the prepositions. All right, you want to know the gospel. What is the key to the gospel? Arthur S. Way said the key to the gospel is in the prepositions. Man, when he said that, I thought I should have paid attention in English class. Is the key to the gospel is in the preposition. I see some of y'all looking at me at blank face. The key to the gospel, you didn't pay attention either. So the key to the gospel <laughs> is in the preposition. So Arthur S. Way said, so the English language was not constructed for a preposition to carry the kind of weight that the gospel calls upon it to carry. So the prepositions break down under the weight and go almost unnoticed. You are watching Mark Hankins Ministries, Faith for Every Nation. Jesus did not go through the agony of death burial, and resurrection to help us just a little bit. What happened from the cross to the throne in those three days changed everything. God wants you to understand who you are and what you have now in Christ. Learn your true identity with the book, Taking Your Place in Christ. Many Christians talk about what they are trying to be, what they need to be, and what they're going to be. Put on the new man by declaring who you are in Christ. Don't ever struggle to find your identity and God's purpose for your life. You have a supernatural identity in Christ. You must have a change of identity to reach your divine destiny. With the spirit of wisdom and revelation, God will show you who you are in Christ. When you acknowledge who Jesus is, he tells you who you are. With Pastor Mark's brand new three CD set, A Man in Christ, you will learn to walk in victory every day. Here at Mark Hankins Ministries, we believe we are called to train and equip believers all over the world. This is why our vision is to translate our books into more than 100 languages. Your gift of any amount will not only help us translate books, but also to complete our new Mark Hankins Ministries Conference Center. This conference center will help us distribute the word more effectively through conferences and will also serve as our new television studio. Visit MarkHankins.org or call 318-767-2001 and join us in partnership to carry the message of faith around the world. 
Thank you, World Missions partners. Together we can, together we will. You look a lot better in Christ than you do outside of Him. Thank you for joining us for the program today. I know that you got so much revelation out of the word that you received. We really want to get this word into your hands so you can further your revelation and deepen your understanding of who you are in Christ. My parents want to get this message to you, taking your place in Christ for your gift of any amount. All you have to do is call the number on the screen or you can visit markhankins.org. This is Alicia Hankins Moran. Have a blessed day. For over five decades, our desire has been to teach foundational biblical truths to believers around the world. Now, like never before, we see an acceleration of that assignment and are determined to take the message of faith to as many nations possible, seeing lives, churches, and nations transformed by the Word of God. We've been to over 50 countries and have ministered the Word and the Holy Spirit in conferences, churches, and Bible schools. Some of these places we go to again and again, and the seed of the Word is still growing today. Our assignment is to distribute the word on every avenue possible, broadcasting on TV, websites, social media, the app, and through publishing our books and CDs. We know if we do our part, God will do his part and make sure the word lands at the right place at the right time. In the last days, the printed page will be the most effective distribution of the gospel. The stories of people receiving our books in remote places around the world fuels our vision to do what the Lord has called us to do. People are receiving our books deep in the heart of Africa, Vietnam, Papua New Guinea, the Philippines, Iran, and Pakistan, and so many other places. Our books are currently translated in many languages and distributed in even more countries. Our vision is to have our books translated into a hundred different languages. Getting the written word in the hands of pastors and believers around the world is paramount to igniting the faith of generations to come. The books can go much further than we can, Partners, we ask you to continue to stand and believe with us that the Lord will continue to open the doors to new countries for our books to be distributed. Not only have we seen the faithfulness of God in the distribution of the books, but the television and media ministry has also accelerated as we recently launched out into daily television. We are now on the Victory Channel, VTN, and the Word Network and are reaching a potential of 150 million homes worldwide. We desire to continue distributing the Word more efficiently. One way we are doing this is through building our brand new Mark Hankins Ministries Conference Center. This conference center will help us minister the word more effectively through conferences and will also serve as our new television studio. We're also streaming our In Christ International Bible College around the world via Facebook and YouTube. This allows anyone in any country to catch the spirit of faith and study the word at their convenience. With the advances of modern technology, the supernatural acceleration and the new open doors, we are reaching more people today than ever before. And that's because of you. It's because of our partners that we're able to accomplish the assignment God has for us. When everyone pulls together, we will see amazing things happen for the kingdom of God. We thank you for your continued partnership. We cannot do what we're doing without our partners. Together we can, together we will. Thank you, World Missions Partners. Thank you for watching Mark Hankins Ministries, Faith for Every Nation.